Um, hello there. Welcome to the lore. Today I am going to go over, um, let's see, uh, <coughs> please excuse me, I have a pretty bad cough right now. Mm. Let's see. You know, long ago there used to be, there used to be, there used to be a guy who wanted to be a hero and fancied himself kind of a knight. He used, he used to run around with a big club. Yeah. Of course, he came from a rather peaceful society, and, uh, he saw a lot of, he thought he saw a lot of things wrong with it that weren't really wrong, and, um, was rather unhappy with the way things turned out. That society kind of existed after the war, after, um, the planet's reformation due to Florimel's activities, where she revived, where she, um, put the planet back where she put plant, where she put the planet of Fairyland back together after the war, after the war had pretty much broken it all apart, you know, during the great multi during the great war, which I will refer to the war for now on. And that's part of something else, but this guy, his name, his name was Jen, his name was Red Jen. Well, he he wasn't a Jen at the time, though. He wasn't a Dejan at the time. He wasn't a genie at the time, though. That would come later. Yeah. He was, and he kind of, he was kind of unhappy with his, with the way society was run and the way it was being, and the way everything was, because he thought it had, because he thought it had gotten soft and complacent and was doing a lot of things that were morally incorrect. And then he ended up getting manipulated by another villain, who was Father Dole, otherwise known as the priest, if you're familiar with that. I mean, the priest is what I originally. The priest is what I originally called him, and then I changed it to Father Dole because, um, Dole was a previous villain I had already made, so I thought, why not? Yeah, Father Dole at that time was trapped inside of a TV, and that was before he got access to the media dimension. Yes, there is a media dimension, and yes, it's canon to the lore. Of course, uh, that's a part of a different story. I will go into that later today, though. I don't see why not. Anyway, Father Dole kind of was very manipulative and led Red Jin to kind of do a lot of acts of heroism that weren't really heroism, but actually made society a lot worse and kind of caused a lot of destruction. Yeah, so he's one of those kind of heroes. And um, it kind of it kind of came to a head where when Red Jin started destroying world after world. Because there was a there was lots of worlds in the multiverse at the time, and Red Jin had destroyed them all out of them. And then a hero came along, who had the help of a fairy with the magic magic giant sewing needle. Yeah, the magic sewing needle. Um, it had the power. It had the power to manipulate electrokinetic signals, which is what how fairies use their magic. By which is how fairies transmit their magic. But you see, in my hand right now is a tool of mad. Is a tool of magic which um, allows one to make concentrate their arts easier. Yeah, it comes from within, meaning that it, it can't actually be broken by anything. <coughs> yeah, even if you break the staff, I, I can just make another one very easily. Hmm. Lots of people get confused and try to break the staff, but no, you can't. Anyway, uh. Anyway, I'll, anyway, electromagnetic signals are connected to imagination, which is how fairies are able to use their magic, and how every other creature is also able to use magic, including humans. Although they got sealed up, they got sealed up for quite a while during when the gods kind of sealed it away due to corrupting humanity after they betrayed the goddess of creation. Yeah, but anyway, um, the magic sewing needle, the, the magic sewing needle allowed. That one hero to kind of fu kind of infuse their arts with the arts of other heroes that they've met along their journey, thus allowing, thus it gave them the power to defeat Red Jin. And Red Jin was eventually sealed away inside of a lamp for quite a long time, and he got angrier and angrier and thought it was all unfair and unfair and everything. And Luminanite eventually found him, and released him from the lamp, as you know, Luminanite went. Lumina Knight decided to manipulate him further to try and to make him into the number one enforcer of Red Moon. 
Yeah, when he got turned into a djinn, he kind of developed some fire power. With the powers of smoldering flames, which is the power he was using to destroy the universe. You see, he kind of he kind of stole the fires of creation inside the he stole the fires of creation and destruction, which were able which were able to which were the primordial fires he which were used to craft the universe which were used by the goddess of creation to craft the universe. Although it also had the power to unmake it with the powers of destruction as well. Yeah, that's how he was able to destroy much of the universe. Of course, he no. Of course, that power is no longer with him, even though he still has the fire power with him. And he chooses to use it mostly for destruction anyway. Yeah, he has absolute power over fire. Not as much as the elemental lord, elemental lord, lord of fire, Salamander. But you know, still to a very high degree, where he's actually pretty dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Now, oh, yeah, there are elemental lords. There's the elemental lord of water, which is Undyne, the elemental lord of air, which is Sylph, the elemental lord of fire, which is Salamander, which I just mentioned, and the elemental lord of earth, which is Gnome. Yeah, those elements were working together under um, Titania, the, di the current ruler of the fairy world. Yeah, Titania used to be a normal human being before she was kind of elected into the position of being Queen of Fairyland. Yeah, and she went underwent a bunch of trials to try and save the world during her own storyline. In which in which an alien race had basically come had basically come down and were deciding, hey, we're gonna we're deciding to manipulate life to involve in the way they saw fit. And when it didn't happen the way they wanted, they were gonna destroy everything, so she kind of teamed up with all this, with all the spirits left behind in the world that were good in order to defeat them and drive them back. And she ended up defeating them. Yeah, those aliens would come back later, though. But in a different timeline. Yeah, basically, basically that alien race basically fancies themselves the new creators of the universe and believes that they're, they have to evolve life to be the way they want it because it would be ideal ideal because it would make them ideal for everything and everyone in the universe which originally started off as a kind of a noble goal but then eventually got eventually became rather oppressive really especially when they started destroying things when things didn't turn out the way they wanted mm. yeah All right so um yeah and Titania was one that, was one that stopped that, and she became a true queen of fairy. After she became an arch archfey in that world, which was pretty nice for her. Yes, I must say. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, you're probably interested in the media dimension. I did mention I would go over that. Well, the media dimension kind of exists inside of television. Of course, it's recently gone to expand onto the to the internet as well. And basically, what the media dimension is, it's basically where all me where all media is technic where the world of media becomes reality. Well, sort of. Except not always. Oh wow! I gotta sell a bunch of stuff. Let's get rid of all the nonsense. All right. Anyway, um, that's pretty much how it, that's pretty much how it worked out. Mm. Yeah. Um. Wait. What? Oh, right. The media dimension. Right. Anyway, the media dimension would come under. Anyway, um, Father Dole would eventually find his way into the media dimension and would merge himself with the black static, which is the negative aspects of the media dimension. Which is mostly made out of stuff like propaganda and terrible shows that nobody really wants to watch anymore. Mm, even some modern day things are in the black static. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly, it's mostly, yeah. Father Dull used it to become all powerful and become and become an entity known as Black Static in order to try and conquer the media dimension, so that he could so using using an old government or war machine left behind during the McCarthy era. And what that machine was was basically a way to try and 
um, control the media so that um, every so that um, the Russians wouldn't be able to brainwash people with um, that silly liberalism or whatever. Oh, right, communism or socialism or whatever. You know how the U.S. government politics are. Very crazy. Not that I support or deny anything like that. I'm not here to be political or anything. That's just part of the story. Right, so anyway. Using the Black Static, he was hoping to take control of all minds and basically make it morally pure as he saw fit. Because you gotta know that Father Dole is the type of person who rather values morality, even a rather values morality, although the things he kind of considers moral aren't exactly always sound. And the way he enforces it is definitely not sound, since he tends to be rather violent about those kind of things. Especially those violations. And he was basically using it as a means to brainwash people towards his end. And there was a magical girl who went to the media dimension who was part of the government's experiment as well. Only she turned out to be a good guy and wanted wanted to liberate it from this machine. Wanted to stop that machine and defeat and defeat this threat black static. She had kind of the powers of costume she had kind of the powers of the media. Such as taking on roles and using them for costumes to gain different abilities. As well as using thespian arts. For example, one of her attacks is like dramatic irony. <clears throat> Kaboom. Take that. You know how it is. Yeah. And Black Static ended up getting repelled and was kind of broken away from his power using the positive aspects of the media, which is the white noise. And then the media dimension, the white noise, is basically all the positive aspects of the media dimension. Which are... Admittedly, some would say not many, but, you know... But, yeah, they're very strong. And I managed to cut him off from the black static and kind of isolate him from the media dimension so he couldn't access it again. And that's part of the storyline there. For example, in the media dimension, there's like a cowboy world, there's like a ninja world, there's like superhero world, there's also cartoon world, all sorts of worlds in there. Yes. Yeah, and the machine, and the machine that was basically made was part of, was called SIN, which stand, which be, SIN, which stands for. Which um, is basically a news network robot. At least it, that's what it was intended as originally. And it, it managed to create. Yeah, that machine was also used to create some. to create SIN. Yes, SIN agents. Which were part of how Black Static was able to control lots of people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. SIN. Yeah. I might have made it. I made SIN basically as a parody of um, something that I found in a book once. That was called. That was part of an international news plot by a bad guy in that world, and I kind of took what they won. Kind of took a joke that they made in it and made it a real thing, but it's unrelated to that. Besides, well, that besides that book was more related towards um, fighting Eldritch beasts, but there are Eldritch beasts in my world. I mean, there is Legion and Lilith, after all. I mean, they're, um... They are demonic, but they're... They're basically like Eldritch Beasts. Yeah, that's basically what they are. Yeah, Lilith is kind of sealed in the Red Moon. She's kind of the big major threat of the universe. She's... She so wanted to destroy the universe that she was basically sealed away. And her and her... Her and the other ones like her wanted to basically conquer the universe and everything, so that's why the gods defeated them and sealed them all away. And only a very few entities like that still exist, in one form or another. One of the major ones that still exists is Legion, but that's because it's very hard to defeat Legion because um, he has so many incarnations throughout history that take on all sorts of different forms, with all things uniting. With all things uniting them, the power, the the dark powers of self, the dark powers of selfishness that are inside of all hearts, and when they be, 
and when that dark power becomes too and when that dark power becomes too much the too much and turns people into monsters well that is what dark virus is now dark virus it's an eldritch virus that is basically created by the those entities which if it infects people it turns them into monsters but it's not limited to just infecting people it can infect monsters animals even objects yeah it's a bit like Gygus's influence, if I might say that. A bit. Right, so anyway, I think that's enough lore to, to go for right now. I um, apologize, I'm not very good at this still. But thank you for watching, I hope you had plenty of fun. Remember to play games and have fun, okay? And I will see you later. And, rem and remember... Keep looking, keep looking up, okay? Things may seem grim for a while. Things may seem grim right now. If they are grim for you, things will get better one day. I know they will. Trust me. See you later.